Did you know that even if you don't have a genetic problem with iron accumulation like hemochromatosis, those excess iron molecules can still damage your heart, still damage your cardiovascular system. Yes, it's true. Hemochromatosis is definitely one of the edge cases in terms of the impact of iron on the cardiovascular system, but you don't have to have extremely excess iron levels in order for that iron to be damaging to your cardiovascular system and your heart specifically. Even moderate but persistent iron overload over time can create create the same damage to your heart tissue and your cardiovascular system. So today that's what we're going to look at. We'll uncover how excess iron can damage your cardiovascular system, what to watch out for, and how you can address it if it is happening. Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Taranella, and this video is all about helping you optimize and improve your health. We'll draw on my over 15 years of experience to help you better understand the link between high iron levels and heart disease. If you're finding these videos useful and helpful, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to continue getting videos like this. All right, let's jump into the video. So the problem here is we have a double-edged sword. On the one end, iron is definitely a vital, important piece for producing hemoglobin and transporting oxygen so that we can turn potential energy like carbohydrates and fats into actual energy. On the other side of that sword is that when the body absorbs too much iron, it can actually create problems. It can start to deposit into tissues where it's not supposed to be, and that buildup, that accumulation of iron can cause problems in areas like the liver, the pancreas, and of course, what we're mostly going to be discussing here is the cardiovascular and heart tissue. So what's the big deal with a little extra iron being deposited in the heart and pancreas and other areas? Iron is a pro-oxidant and oxidative stress is one of the main things that damages our tissues. And over time, this can lead to things like cardiomyopathy, which is an enlargement of the heart, arrhythmias, and congestive heart failure. So understanding the impact of iron overload and high iron levels on your heart tissue can not only protect you from these potential problems and hazards, but it can also improve your health overall by reducing that oxidative stress. So why does this actually occur? How do people get iron overload or excess iron? Sometimes it just happens from consuming too much, either in the way of a supplement or too much red meat or too much animal-based protein. Sometimes you have a genetic problem with increased absorption of iron from the digestive tract, so you're not necessarily eating too much or more than the regular person, but you're just absorbing a lot more of what you do consume. And then there's also iron infusions and blood transfusions where people are anemic and they actually have to get more iron, but that can get overdone in some instances leading to iron accumulation. And then the last reason, which is not as common, but decreased excretion of the iron through the digestive tract. So the mistake or obstacle that sometimes people run into when they're having excess iron or iron overload is that the symptoms can be a vague. So you might have a little bit of decreased energy that you attribute to maybe not sleeping as well. Maybe you have some joint pain that comes and goes. Some other areas that maybe would be a little more alarming would be skin discoloration, abdominal discomfort that comes and goes. These aren't necessarily only attributed to excess iron accumulation. And for sure, they're not necessarily going to be linked to heart damage or problems with your heart. And so that's the first problem is that the symptoms can be vague and hard to attribute to iron overload. The second thing is that they develop slowly over time. So you're not necessarily waking up out of nowhere and having these symptoms. They come on gradually. You may have them for one day every couple months, and then it starts coming every month. And over time, it becomes more and more frequent, these symptoms. And that way you don't notice it as much. The other thing is a lot of times iron levels aren't routinely checked. And if you're a female, you may get your serum iron checked, but ferritin levels are often not checked in males or females, but specifically in males. Once you start having these problems that make us think maybe there is iron overload or too much iron accumulation, it's oftentimes too late. The damage has already been done. Again, these symptoms develop slowly and a lot of times people just attribute it to normal aging. So the first thing is cluing you into some of the symptoms that may be going on that will alert you to checking your ferritin and checking your iron saturation to make sure this isn't happening. And the next thing we want to look at is some of the details, like why does this actually happen and how does this affect our heart when you have too much iron accumulation? So let's break down a little bit more how excess iron can impact the heart tissue and cardiovascular system. 
So when free iron interacts with oxygen, it's going to create something known as a free radical. And free radicals by nature are going to damage the tissues that they interact with. If that iron's floating around in your blood vessels, it's going to damage those blood vessels, leading to sometimes build up a plaque and sometimes damaging the heart tissue itself. Normally, the levels of iron that are floating around in the blood are tightly regulated. They're bound to a protein and they don't come off of that protein unless the iron is inside a cell. And that protein is called the transferrin protein, and that's something that can be measured as the transferrin saturation. So as the saturation, meaning the amount of iron on that protein goes up, it's going to be less tightly bound to that protein, meaning it can fall off more easily. When it falls off, that's when it can inter interact with other tissues in a process called ferroptosis. When that happens, it not only damages the tissues, it also, when it happens over and over again, it's sapping or reducing your body's antioxidant systems. So initially the antioxidant systems will get triggered and start to try and quench the oxidative damage that's going on from the iron. And these would be things like glutathione and vitamin C. But over time, the reserves of those antioxidants get depleted. And that's what we see in hemochromatosis is that there's organ damage over time. It doesn't happen on day one or even day 10. It's going to happen 10 years down the road, but it happens slowly. So there's a little bit of damage or a little more. And over time, it's cumulative. But the other thing is you don't necessarily need to have actual frank hemochromatosis to have this problem. Hemochromatosis is a problem of excess iron that is genetically driven, but there are different genetics that can also contribute to iron accumulation. And with people changing their diet to more animal-based protein and doing things like carnivore, you may have a more subtle genetic picture for hemochromatosis, meaning you don't actually have it, but because you're consuming so much and you have a little bit of increased absorption of iron, your levels are going to start to creep up. And that's what studies looking at this find is that even if you don't have actual hemochromatosis, if you have elevated iron levels for extended periods of time, you're going to end up with the same heart cardiovascular damage as someone that doesn't actually have frank hemochromatosis. So it's really the iron excess and the effect of that iron on the tissues that we just described that's doing it even without hemochromatosis. So there's various ways that excess iron can intersect in your unique situation to create these problems. In the case of of the cardiovascular system, the excess iron can start to damage the functioning of the heart. You start damaging the contractility proteins in the heart muscle, and you can start to have weakness there in the heart tissue, and it can weaken the pumping action, leading to what we call cardiomyopathy, which means the heart starts to expand and balloon out because the contractile force is not as strong. Arrhythmias can also occur from excess iron in the sense that the iron actually starts to get into the electrical conducting system in the heart, which can then cause skipping of beats or excess beats, which can lead to arrhythmias. And of course, the classic arterial sclerosis and heart disease is happening from that excess iron not being able to be quenched by the antioxidant system because there's just too much coming in. And that starts to damage the blood vessels and damage the tissues within the artery wall called the endothelium. Over time, that inflammation plus cholesterol creates more plaque buildup. And there's definitely plenty of research to validate all these things that I've said in the literature. And I'll put some links in the description for you to check out if you want to look at those. But we know for sure that excess iron causes free radicals, which causes oxidative damage and damage to the cardiovascular tissue, leading to fibrosis and impaired heart function. Now, fibrosis is like a scarring process that's going to happen more towards the end stage, but that ongoing inflammation and damage in the heart tissue can also cause the heart tissue not to work as well and swell up, leading to the cardiomyopathy that we described. And that's because it's weakening the heart muscles. We also know that therapeutic phlebotomy, when you do those, in patients that have iron accumulation and are having some of these problems with arrhythmias or cardiomyopathy, if they have hemochromatosis or don't, when you start doing therapeutic phlebotomies, sometimes these things start to clear up and get better. That's also how we know that the iron accumulation is causing some of these issues. So just a quick note, I wanted to mention that we do have a playlist on iron overload and hemochromatosis. If this is something that is of interest to you and you want to go a little bit deeper on some of these topics, check out that playlist on iron overload and hemochromatosis. You may find some of those topics of interest.
So here's some of the important points that I want you to take away from this video. In terms of protecting your heart from excess iron and high iron, the key is early detection. The longer you have that iron sitting in your body, those high levels, the more likely you're going to have damaged tissue, specifically your cardiovascular system, but other organs as well. If it's high, then you definitely want to find the cause. Maybe you're consuming too much iron-rich foods. Maybe you're taking a supplement that's impacting this, or maybe you actually have hemochromatosis. Knowing this is going to help you with the next step, which is actually managing it. And you can get tested for things like ferritin, iron, and iron saturation. These are going to give you some good ideas on what's going on with the overall iron levels in your body. And typically this isn't just a one and done thing. Yes, you want to check it at least once better than none, but you may want to check it periodically as you're aging, especially for women as they age and they're not menstruating, the iron levels tend to go up. And that's when some of these things might start to arise. The same is true for males. They're not menstruating of course, but the iron levels do tend to accumulate over time, especially if you're someone that does have a little bit higher iron absorption, and especially if you're consuming lots of red meat. So in thinking about iron and your cardiovascular health, moderation is always going to be key. Some people can tolerate lots of red meat and lots of iron levels and not tend to accumulate it, while others are more sensitive to it. So it is really based on your unique needs. So hopefully this helps you better understand the link between high iron levels and heart disease. If you have questions on anything, in this video, please drop it in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your questions. If you want me to answer your questions in more detail and with more specifics, consider joining the membership program where I'll put more time and attention into the questions you ask. Now, one question you might be wondering about after watching this content is, how do I know if I have hemochromatosis? And you can find more information on that right in this video here. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.